Hello, and welcome to Venture Visionaries. On the panel today, we have Graham and Leanne Carling, co-founders of the Carling Group, an international family office that's been involved in transactions valued at more than one billion pounds. The group has acquired several multi-million pound businesses in the UK and Europe, and are currently focused on decarbonizing the technology, energy, marketing, building, and healthcare sectors. And joining them, we have Steve Bolton, who has been an entrepreneur for 30 years, a venture investor for 15, and today he is the managing partner of Bolt Angels, an early stage venture firm that invests into tech businesses that have the potential to go on to become unicorns. Pitching today is Robin Emerson from the Georgia Emerson Center. Let's see how they get on. Welcome, Robin. Tell us about yourself and the business. So I'm Robin Emerson. I'm the managing director um, of a business called Georgia Healthcare Group. And um, we were founded um, to basically tackle the problem we have um, in the UK right now with our healthcare. I think we all know the crisis that we face with the NHS. And we do that through two um, major ways, um, which is two separate companies, which all operates on the Georgia Healthcare Group, which on one side, we've got Living Room Health, which deals with all your traditional um, such as diagnostics, such as MRI, such as blood tests, all the everyday stuff that the waiting list are far too long for now. And then on the other side, we have the Georgia Emerson Centre, which does innovative medicines such that you can't get in the NHS, such as medical cannabis, ketamine treatments, um, and um, around that sort, sort of side of the business. Fantastic. What made you start the company? So the reason I started um, was actually a personal reason, um, through my daughter Georgia, which is what the company's named after. So Georgia was born in 2016 and she suffers from a rare chromosome deletion. And from that chromosome deletion, she suffered a severe form of epilepsy. So Georgia would have had over 30 seizures a day. And in 2017, she actually ended up in intensive care um, twice, to which the second time they told me to take Georgia home to die and there was nothing more they could do for her. Um, so that sent me in a course to find a solution for Georgia, to which I came across medical cannabis. Um, of course, at that time it was illegal in the UK. So I went about with some other people to change the law within the UK. And we successfully did that in 2018 in that November. And January came the following year and Georgia became the first child in the United Kingdom to get a prescription for medical cannabis. So I was over the moon, extremely happy. Thankfully, I can say Georgia is now seven years old and thriving. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. What made you lead to the, okay, the, there's healthcare problems, but what made you then expand into the other side of the business that you? Just seeing the, the entrepreneur in me, I have an entrepreneur background. Um, I was in construction previously. Um, had quite a large construction company working for uh, Tesco, doing a lot of their work. Right. And that just set me on um, seeing the entrepreneur's path. Spent six months probably of George's life um, sitting in a hospital. And I would sit there and I would look around me and watch what was going on mm. and going, why are we doing that? Why are they doing that? You know, there's better ways to do this, better ways to treat people and get patient centric. Mm. So what are you looking for? What, you know, why are you here? What's, 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 um, what's the objective here today? So the business is doing really well right now. We're, we're expanding rapidly and we're now in a raise of 5 million currently um, to move forward to where we are. Um, we're on track um, to hit 5 million uh, turnover in our, uh, this financial year, which will be in April. And we're just moving forward from there. We have more opportunities that has come up for us to expand. We're just, now it's just all about cash, all about being able to move forward, push the business forward. So that's what it's, it's come to. With healthcare, it takes such a long process. They originally established a business and set that up, all the accreditations, all your, your CQCs, your UCASs, all your various things that you need to be able to, to go forwards and that takes a takes a lot of time to do and we've been able to you now get that in place and everything's there the systems are all in place everything is, is, is doing well and now it's just about expanding out and that's what we want to do so so the, so what is the plan then I mean, what's your five five year goal what's the what's the intention from where you are at the moment five million this year yep um and, and also i'd like to understand the split between the both sides of the business yeah. uh, that make up that revenue stream. So we want to keep expanding the business. Mm -hmm. Basically the aim, we have looked at two locations for our next locations, which is the Isle of Man and Belfast. Um, both come the fact that we got opportunities um, and both the Isle of Man's faced a very similar um, situation as the NHS. 
and they only have one hospital and they need more MRIs. So we're looking at uh, another centre there. The government want to give us a contract actually for their waiting lists and MRIs. Belfast the same. There's even a four, week, uh, four to six week waiting list for private MRIs um, in, in Northern Ireland as well. So there's a serious problem um, uh, there as well. So just seeing the, the opportunities and doing that, but we want to keep expanding the businesses out. Between the two different sections, um, it's actually probably quite a quite an even um, split between the two businesses. Um, between what we're doing, you know, on the innovative side, we, as I say, with things with medical cannabis, the stem cell uh, treatments, which we've now done over four thousand injections of, where we take um, the stem cells out of the uh, the fat um, on you, and then it's used on your various different joints and treating things like arthritis. Um, and we have we've done that very successfully over four thousand patients now. Um, again, um, and then below our businesses, we have vertical integration of other businesses sitting below that we feed ourselves up. So you know, things like our own pharmacy in-house, our own lab in-house. So none of that has to be outsourced for, for the two businesses. Mm -hmm. It all creates more revenue within the business. I'm in the Financial District of London, asking people their thoughts on the future of healthcare. Let's go. How has technology impacted your healthcare experience? A lot, uh, a lot in the sense that I'm, um, I'm, I'm really, you know, always on the on the phone to look at what are my test results, what you know, the conversation between the doctor and myself, uh, as opposed to go to a clinic or wherever. Sure. Then that's uh, that's now all, all online, and mm. that's pretty cool. That's so yeah. technology has changed a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. How has technology impacted your healthcare experience? Technology, I don't think it has impacted my healthcare experience. I think it's, if you think about it, it's actually made it better because technology now, a lot of people use technology to get fitter and better and to move around. So I believe technology does make things better. So. What do you believe is the future of healthcare? Well, I run a technology company in the te uh, conversational AI space where we're analyzing uh, conversations and um, allowing people to have conversations with computers rather than humans and this AI technology has got the capability of assisting doctors and and uh, every uh, type of uh, medical professional um, as they deal with patients you know we've got a, particularly in this country so much demand on the health service that I think that technology assisting the doctors in things like diagnosis is is, is, is key and, and I think the future of health service will be more robots um, performing operations uh, and more computer assist assisting doctors uh, as they treat patients with things like you know diagnosis using large data sets to to, to give feedback to uh, doctors are you looking to build more not build or uh, acquire more centers then for the MRI for yeah we are we're looking to do more should we do a bit of a hub and spoke mm -hmm. type model is what we do so um, we're located at Paddington um, at the moment in a state-of-the-art facility there and we have that facility and then we will have partners around us so things like physios um, is a massive pet, uh, network that we have we onboard them we have a very strong tech part of the business so we're able to we actually write our own programs within it so people can actually monitor people getting their bloods and getting their tests the whole way through um, and we just want to we replicate that is the idea out across other areas within the UK where we have that hub and spoke model where you have a centre like ours at Paddington and then you have your partners around it that just feeds people in into the clinic. Where do you see the biggest areas of growth coming from? I think the biggest areas is, is the witness are getting worse and worse, they're mm. not getting any better. You know, we're, we're sitting here now and there's seven, over 7 million people on the NHS waiting lists right now and it's just, it's, it's, it's not getting any better and you know, we have we have people coming to us. It's uh, actually most of our people, seventy percent, will be self pay. So when we look and people talk about who's our competition, and you look at people like the large players, um, like HGA Healthcare, these different people within within the field, it ends up that you know we're very different than them because they're they're just feeding the bupas the that sort of model of the private um, medical insurance, and we do cover private medical insurance as well. But we actually get most of our people from self self pay. So people realise that actually an MRI isn't that expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think there's been a lot of fear in the UK for a long time of people thinking, you know, watching America and think private health care costs thousands. And it really doesn't. It's, it's actually lots of it's accessible to a lot of people. And you look at 
um, things like MRIs, you know, we, we charge £325 for an MRI. And, you know, I could book it, book you in tomorrow to get an MRI and you could have your results within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, it changes people's lives and I've seen that firsthand. And do you have a health care plan that people can subscribe to or, or buy It's into? actually something yeah. we're developing we're at developing? the moment. We're in a development for that, for our mm -hmm. own health care plan. Yep. So we're looking at like a well man where you could come in or a well woman and you get so many like, health like check. your cancer screening so many blood tests and what makes us very unique is the fact we have our own lab on site most clinics most places don't have their own lab and us being able to have our own lab means we can do our own bloods and you know the cost of that is so yeah. so little to be able to do that and the timing around that and people being able to get them full screening so somebody can come in and get the blood tests can come get an mri and we're seeing more and more of that actually we're seeing more people just coming to get general health checks because mm -hmm. it's something that the, again the nhs simply does not offer if you went into your gp and said can i have a an mot can i get checked you'd be you'd be probably be laughed out of the building i, I actually tried last year and uh, said on the website you know call this number not available in this county <laughs> yeah. so, so, and yeah, yeah. you would do it for your car wouldn't you exactly. but then yeah. you know, exactly. it's not available for your exactly. body especially yeah. now with with cancers etc there too so there's there's all exciting areas that we're going at, going into as well pharmacogenomics is another exciting area that we're working on where we're able to get somebody's genetic profile and we'll understand over 200 different types of drugs and we're able to understand how that medication will react to you as an individual and what your chances are of that working or not working for you. Um, and that's that's a massive thing that's really, you know, it is the future of medicine. That's what it's going to be. Because I think we've all been to the GP where they'll go take two of those and try. And then if that one doesn't work, we'll try that one. Yeah. And that just cuts all that out. And also around psychotic um, medications and, and uh, et cetera for the mental health side. And the mental health side of our business is something that, you know, we've seen rapidly growing. So we have, you know, mm -hmm. it's very, very busy now and that comes down to things like ADHD assessments for example that's a five-year wait in the NHS now to get an ADHD assessment five years and you, know, you can come, come to our clinic and you can get an ADHD assessment in, your, in two weeks and you've got your results and then you, and then you can provide the support after the exactly. diagnosis yeah so it's a whole process and then we do with innovative treatments around different types as well so some of our a lot of medical cannabis around treatments for our mental health mm -hmm. and then we're actually just starting our ketamine clinic for depression um at the moment so one of the first centers to offer um ketamine as well as an approach so these new ways of treating that are becoming more and more popular um anxiety etc for mm -hmm. for uh, medical cannabis is huge so it is and we're seeing that we have lots of people like veterans and lots of patients like that again um people have experienced various different mental health problems of had my own mental health struggles with what happened with Georgia. So that was obviously a massive big thing for me, mm -hmm. that side of the business, you know, talking about men's mental health. I like to talk about men's mental health a lot and the problems that we do face in the UK mm -hmm. again. And how do we talk about that? How do we move that forwards? And, you know, that's what the, the clinic's about. And I think that's what makes us very different than, than any other clinic out there because we've got soul, we've got heart because it comes from my vision, my drive to the rest of the team and, and what we're doing. Yeah, talk to us about the team because you're obviously really passionate about this and your backstory is incredible. I think what you've done for your daughter and then just for society at large is amazing. Um, but you're only as strong as the team behind you, right? So talk to us about the team. Yeah, I have to say I'm really lucky with the team we've got behind me. Fantastic team. Um, we've got Professor Adrian Wilson, who's one of the leading um, knee surgeons in the world, um, leading orthopedic surgeon. He travels around the world, actually teaches. Um, um, various different new techniques um, for, for treatment. He's extremely well known. So he's actually a, a partner within the business. We have Simon Checkley again, um, was a major player in Stryker, and, um, which sells different types of um, medical equipment. And he was, uh, he's, he's heads up another part of the business. We have um, Dan Smith, again, who's a, a CTO, spent years he's over 30 years in, in medical background again him and adrian work very very closely together and he's got a tech background so all the health tech that we do all the all the various things that we build in house um is able to do that with dan and then yes and then out from that we have um paul atherton who's our chairman and uh, paul's background was actually oil and gas um he took his oil and gas company he's the third or fourth largest oil company 
um, in the UK and, uh, and sold it out to the Guitar Royal family um, at the time. So he's huge experience of growing a business and what, our, what we're looking to do, which is eventually go public. Trying to get an understanding of the revenue stream. So 70% of the revenue at the moment is individuals play, paying privately. Well, how do you see that, you know, in the next few years? How do you see that? Is that going to be the case? Are you going to be working with insurance companies or doing your own sort of, like Leanne had alluded to, uh, like a, you know, I don't know, like a subscription like plan type planner. thing? Or yeah. how, how do you see the revenue growing? I think a mixture of all that. So we, we do insurance work at the moment as well, yeah. but but the, the, the private, the self-pay has just been getting stronger and stronger. Right. And interestingly, even with connections I have in the industry, actually even the bigger players that have all been traditionally that are now starting to see self-pay creep into them more and more mm. and more of people are doing, because people will pay for their bupers and they pay for their axes and they pay for the different insurances, but then they realize that actually that's very limited no. and a lot of treatments they get as well. So people have, a lot of people have stopped there. And they're also and fed up on the waiting list. So you can, as you say, self-fund the MRI rather than paying for the, the exactly. whole healthcare, if you like. I think and people are just naturally, as you say, people are now getting fed up with, with waiting so long. So we see that as a massive revenue stream, you know, moving forwards. Mm -hmm. We see the insurance. We actually, another really interesting area is corporate as well. Mm -hmm. So we've started to go out to talk to a lot of corporates. So we can actually set up, we went with a, a solicitor firm in the other day that was chatting to us and we were talking about how we could set up a, a whole corporate section for them. People can come in, they can get, we can go out, we can take people's bloods on site. We can set up for, for the bottom of state, take their bloods, come back, and we can do that as a regular checkups. And, so that's another good revenue stream too. And then of course, NHS contracts. So we've actually just got our first NHS contract as well um, for MRI. And they'll be sending us uh, over 120 scans a week um, down to our facility as well. So that's that's another nice top up, as you would say, with all the NHS work um, to, to the rest of it. And that allows us to, to do things like we work longer into the evenings um to, to take that sort of nhs contract work mm -hmm. as well. take it on well, it seems to me though i mean that there's there's a real sort of, sort of blended margin here because you've got the private work which I'm, I'm assuming is probably the most lucrative because yeah. it's there's you know it, it's bad you know you keep the margin insurance work i can imagine nhs again get a bit lower so there's a real bit blended margin exactly. uh, model uh, uh on how you're looking at it how is that different though to a private hospital so, I'm to get yeah, so a private that. hospital will be predominantly bupa, predominantly insurance work. Okay. Bupa is your axes. They'll mm. they mostly do that work, okay. and they just churn it out in volume. Yep. And that's what they're looking for in that relationships. But the likes of axes and bupas, because they're cutting their the money that they're giving so much, they don't even you know they don't even like new places mm. opening because they're they're cutting down so much of what they're giving. Yeah. And that's that's what it comes down mm. to. So that self pay model is is what what mm. people want now it's what people are doing it's a you know like mobile phones you have your pay month you have your pay as you go and it's that pay as you go model that is becoming more and more popular with people do you think though that maybe that's only in large cities like london for mm -hmm. example i get that probably manchester birmingham glasgow edinburgh maybe yeah. but i i know for you know where we live up in, or, or lived up in Scotland, a lot of the private hospitals have closed down, you know, because yeah. they couldn't make the NHS model work. They, uh, and certainly people up, where, you know, where we were, we wouldn't have wouldn't the means have. to pay it or, or wouldn't yeah. pay it, you know, yeah. for whatever their mentality yeah, yeah. was, it should yeah. be provided to them. I, th I think that certainly was the case. I think mm. just it's changed because the NHS has got so bad. Sure. I mm. think that's the problem. Mm. The waiting list right across the country, yeah. you know, is so bad of a family down in Portsmouth. It's the same down there. It's the same, same everywhere across the UK. So I think that, you know, that was certainly the case before, but now becoming more accessible to things. And the problem is the big um, giant hospitals too, is their overheads are so big. They're, that That's the problem, they're a machine. They have to get that covered. Where we're, we're small and nimble to be able to do what we do and we do it well. Mm -hmm. And we go in with our MRIs, we go in with the things that we know that are the keys to people moving forward. You know, the MRI you take, you know, in America, people, that's how they treat people. They basically triage for MRI, where we've all been there. You go into the hospital and they go, I'll refer you to this consultant. Then I'm going to refer you to them. And then probably after three months later, they'll book you in for an MRI mm. rather than put you in an MRI and see what the problem was day one. Yeah. 
And that's just because they don't have the capacity. It's a cost station and they don't have the capacity to do that. Um, but the, the way we operate is just totally different. And, and that nimble approach compared to a big, you know, organization like HCA and these big hospitals, big large private hospitals, it has huge overheads um, that they need and they need to churn so many patients through. It's just not the, the business model that we, we have. And because you're filling the void of between the demand for that plus the demand for the innovative treatments that you just simply can't get on the NHS. So things like your medical cannabis, your mental health treatments, ketamines, all these various mm -hmm. things or stem cell treatments all our MSK uh, treatments, you know, that's just stuff that you simply couldn't get in the NHS. George is your prime example. Mm. Even the, the mental health, is it 10 months like waiting it, list it, even just to get a referral? Yeah, it, it, it depends all what, what you're going for. But yeah, I know like even myself, when I went with my own mental health problems to my GP at the time, they told me that I could see somebody in eight weeks time. Mm -hmm. And this was fine, I needed help Some today. Some don't even publish the waiting list now, mm. do they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's just change tack a bit and talk about cannabis. Um, obviously, you must be in a really strong position as being somebody that was a forerunner yeah. of that. So is that a big part of the growth plans in future? It's a massive part of the growth plan. So it is, you know, we have big organizations like Pfizer coming out the other week to admit that they see cannabis as the future of, of where pain medicine is going. And, you know, that it is going to be eventually, that is going to be where, where things sit. And yes, um, I'm, you know, I was going to say fortunate enough, but I'm fortunate with the, the journey I've had. But yes, I'm, I'm recognised as, as somebody. I've done a lot of media regarding George's story. I've done everything from this morning right through to BBC Breakfast. And I go on, I've spoken about George's journey. And being able to do that then has, has put me in that position that people understand that. In fact, just this morning, I was asked to speak at Oxford University next year on on cannabis and, and the future they see around it. So it's something else I'm hugely passionate, passionate. about. And seeing the difference in you know Georgia every day, people always go, "Where's it?" You know, we look at evidence. Georgia's that evidence. Georgia wouldn't be here, and that's somebody you know. That's my child that I was told nothing more we could do, say goodbye to, her. and now with a happy, thriving seven-year-old, that's that to me shows everything of where cannabis can be going. Great. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Right? I would like to hear more about the ketamine as well because I've never heard them. The treatment, you know, have, yeah. you, have you heard it used for, you know, pain? Uh, yeah, so you know? ketamine's been used now quite a bit in America. There's a number of clinical trials have been done on it and they're actually seeing over 80% success rate. So they are for, uh, for people with chronic depression. Right. And then, so we're starting off with using it for chronic depression and it's also being used for treatment for addiction. Right. So they're getting really good results on addiction for it as well. So instead of people having to go into rehab and spend long periods of time in rehab, then they're getting this treatment and ongoing treatment with ketamine. Again, it's about all these different compounds that we haven't explored properly, and now we're finally doing that. You know, I remember sitting down with one of our scientists who, who said, there's no such a thing as a, a good compound, a bad compound, there's only compounds, mm -hmm. and it's how we use them. It's like any any drug, and if these various compounds that we've, we haven't used, you know, and now we're suddenly realizing actually the medical potential of some of these is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Amazing, okay, last question. How much you're looking for? Yeah. What's the valuation? How much have you raised? Yeah. Where so you... we're we're raising um, five million as an as current round of Series A. We're looking to do that's on a thirteen point six million valuation for the business at the moment. That comes down to just uh, that valuation comes from our existing um, investors and what we've invested to date. So again, um, we've in, had around about five million invested into the business to date, and that's came from the current shareholders or our current management structure. Um, as well, so everybody's got skin in the game, as the as the saying goes, as well. And yeah, now we're looking to expand forwards with that that five million. Thanks very much, Robin. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So, guys, we just heard from Robin. He's now left the room, so we can find out what you guys thought of his pitch and his business. His pitch is fantastic, and obviously, you know, we how he started, and you know, his passion and his drive just completely shines through. I would be interested to find out more. I think there's loads of channels and different ways that they can generate a, a revenue. So I would be interested in you know speaking or finding out more. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Continuing the conversation. Yes, uh -huh. it's a proper trailblazer, isn't it? Yeah. Mission led. I mean, to be we're all parents here. To be told yeah. that your daughter's going to die and there's nothing more you can do. I mean, how many people have been told that? 
and then the worst has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, crikey, you know, you, you, you don't ever want to be in that position, yeah. but um, it's clearly inspired them and, and he's done phenomenal, you know, to get to the position he's in. Yeah. I think for me, just looking at it from a business point of view, though, I think it's maybe, I think the cannabis side of it is the business. And I don't know if it needs to be going. I understand the opportunities, particularly in the private market. Mm. We live in Dubai. I can get an MRI, CT scan, anything tomorrow. Next day. You know, mm. the next day. Stem cell treatment, all the stuff he's talking about. Absolutely now, it's big, big stuff out there. So, and I will pay, even if the insurance are dragging their heels. I've got a sore knee. I'm paying. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. sure. But that's a big city like Dubai, and that's why I asked the question around. I can, I can I get it with people that have the means to go and do that tomorrow yeah. or are desperate enough they have to do it. But you know, I don't know if that's more of a niche though in particular big cities. That was just the question mm -hmm. I had. But clearly his background and everything he's done has been driven by this C B D and medicinal C B D. And I see, you know, we travel to the US and, and all mm -hmm. over the place and we, we see we see that we see how that's affecting the world, mm. and particularly from a medical point of view. Huge opportunity here in the UK. Yeah. I don't know if that should, for me, would be is his value. That's the value there. Yeah, that's really the only really question point. I've got around yeah. it. Yeah. The other stuff, private hospitals, private businesses. I, I do Fine. see a huge shift though, because we live in Dubai, that people are willing to pay. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, yes. they, they yeah. are fed up. As I said, yeah. you know, they're fed up of the waiting list. You know. Yeah. You could be gone in eight weeks, but mm -hmm. you could get the same MRI tomorrow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think people are really. But it's, the thing is, the NHS is right, it's a niche market. The NHS yeah. is practically yeah. broken. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's hanging on by fingertips. So I mean, there's there's probably the the reasoning for having the hospital and making it affordable is a business model in itself. But I hear what you're saying about the cannabis being almost mm. wing -based. What about you, Steve? Yeah, I agree. I think there's multiple businesses in there. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly there are in the way they've structured it, but mm. the the massive growth in that area. When you see what's happened in the States, um, I think that could be huge, yeah. really huge. The online pharmacy as well could scale yeah. up really yeah. well, yeah. especially with the yeah. terminal service. So those two bits of it I really like because mm. massive growth potential, but maybe a higher degree of risk in them. Um, the other thing is, you know, bricks and mortar, solid, steady, it's about occupancy, um, margin, all of that sort of yeah. thing. So, um, but how many are they going to open? Another one and then another one and another one. So that's a, just a slower burn, almost like sure. a, different type of play from an investment point of view. Yeah. So you've got to keep um, your focus so, and work yeah. out almost which to run with. Yeah. But to end, would you invest? Uh, I would definitely look at it seriously. Yeah, yeah um, there's a lot of parts of that business I really like. Okay. And you guys, you would take it further in conversations to see how far? Yeah, I thought it was a huge scope, particularly in the yeah. medicinal uh, cannabis uh, side of it. I'd really be interested in, in that aspect of it. And I really think, given that he was one of the guy, you know, the guys that changed the laws in this country, yeah. Yeah. and he's a pioneer in that field. Yeah. I think that's where the value is. And I'd be interested in uh, hearing more, and I'd certainly interested in the value yeah. in that. Oh, great, great feedback, yeah, guys. Well, did really well. Thank you for all your input. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Robin, well done. Great pitch, unbelievable story, and an awesome business opportunity. How do you think it went? Yeah, I think it went really well, John. I think they, I think they got the business. I think they understood. Yeah. I think they see the the opportunity that's in place now. Um, we all know what the industry is like now. What healthcare is like in the United it's Kingdom. Scary. It yeah. is. It has. It's got. It has the opportunity. Frightening. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's it. You know, it's, when people see that, they see that opportunity now, and they can see that that's what it is. And I think my passion, I think, came across well with them as well. I enjoy it's mission led. It's proper lived experience, right? Were you expecting the questions that you got from the panel? Yeah, I think most of those questions is usually the questions that yeah. you get asked. Um, I could see that they definitely had a big interest in the medical cannabis yeah. side as well and could see that what's going on now, a lot of people are um, naturally attracted to that side of their business. And again, even the ketamine treatments and coming up as well. So that was interesting. Yeah, there's some intrigue there. And also there was a recognition of perhaps a name that was mentioned, the knee surgeon. Yeah. I think they're, they're invested already in medicals. We'll unravel that away from the, the programme. But in terms of how you felt it went, it was a positive interaction. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't be more pleased, to be honest, of how it went. Yeah. I definitely felt very, very positive. And uh, I felt that, you know, the, the interest was there and, and you could definitely, you know, answer the questions that they were asking. Yeah. And it helps you probably because you've done quite a lot of media. So the whole bright lights camera doesn't really phase you. No, not anymore. You no. stay in the early days, but exactly. yeah, you you stay at now. So yeah. I am, so. You did really well. It was positive feedback from the guys as well. So well done. That's really good. Thanks, John. Yeah.